Hey everybody, Tom from X-Ray Tech here. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about testing your no-code automations. I'll explain why testing your automations is an essential part of the build process, and I'll show you how to test your automations in Zapier and Make. And I'll give you a few tips for making sure that you get the most out of your tests. Let's get started. The first thing to understand is that testing is not optional in automation apps like Zapier and Make. You need to use test data to even build the automations in the first place. For instance, if you want your automation to run every time you add the urgent tag to an email, then you must have a message in your inbox with the urgent tag. When you test the trigger, Zapier or Make should find that email and return a long list of relevant data which you can use to then build the rest of the automation. If your trigger step finds nothing when you test it, then that's a sign that something wasn't configured correctly. Without test data from your trigger, you'll have a very difficult time building your automation, and in many cases, it won't even be possible at all. Testing your automations is obviously extremely important. So what does it actually look like? Zapier and Make both make it easy to test your automations, and we'll show you how to use both. If you'd like to learn how testing works in a different automation provider, just let us know in the comments below. In Zapier, you'll be prompted to test every step that you build with a clearly labeled button, but it looks a little different based on whether you're testing the trigger or the actions. Once you've configured your trigger for the first time, you'll see a button that says Test Trigger. Just click on it and grab your first round of test data. You can then see the information that Zapier found. In our example, we're looking at an Airtable record that was added to our specified base and table. If your trigger step found several pieces of data, you can just click here to choose a different one. You can also click on load more if you don't see a record that should have been found, or if you created new data since the last time that Zapier pulled the test data. Once you've reviewed that test data and confirmed that everything looks right, you can click on continue to add an action to your automation. In our example, we'll create a simple step that sends a brief message in Slack with the name of the contact in our directory. Once that step is configured, click on Continue, and you'll see a button that says Test Action. Before you click on that though, bear in mind that testing a step in Zapier will actually perform that action, and it will do so immediately. In our case, clicking on Test Action will send a Slack message to the designated channel right away. When you're testing your automations, always make sure that your test data is safe to use. You probably don't want to send a bunch of test messages to clients, leads, or other contacts. If you need some fake data to test with, we'd recommend checking out Mockaroo. It's a great free resource for creating a CSV or an Excel file with any data types you want, like a person's name, a fake company name, dates, even numbers formatted like IP addresses. Alternatively, you could just give somebody a heads up, let them know that you're testing the automation, and be on your way. Once you're all set, click on the Test button and your configured action should occur. In our case, we'll see a Slack message pop up. We can also see additional data about the message that was sent in Zapier. If your automation is configured how you want it, you can click on Publish to turn it on. Now let's take a look at testing an automated scenario in Make. Testing an automation in Make is a little different, as Make gives you the option to test the entire scenario at once. But first, let's just start with testing the trigger. Once you've set up your trigger module, click OK to close the configuration window. Save your changes, then right-click on the trigger module. You could select Run This Module Only to run it, but you'll get the most consistent results by selecting Choose Where to Start first. Then select Choose Manually. From here, you can just pick a specific piece of data to use as you're building your automation. Now you can right-click again and select Run This Module Only you should see a number appear here. Click on it to see the data retrieved by the trigger. When you add a step, you can test that step alone by saving your changes, right-clicking on the step and selecting Run This Module Only. However, depending on the integrations you're using, you might see some unexpected results when you test one step at a time in Make. 
And if your action module is referring to a previous module, it will also ask you to provide some data manually before you can test that specific step, which will make it hard to tell if the automation will actually work correctly when all of the steps are running in sequence. In many cases, the safest approach is to test the entire scenario by returning to the trigger step, choosing a starting point manually, and then clicking Run Once. It can be a little tedious, but it gives you the most consistent and reliable test results. If you've watched some of our previous Make and Integromat tutorials on this channel, you may have noticed that we typically use this method to test. Just like with Zapier, testing a step or a scenario in Make will cause it to run, immediately creating, updating, or deleting data as you've specified in that specific module. So make sure that it's safe to run your automation with the test data you're using before you start testing the actions inside of your automation. With both Zapier and Make, we'd recommend running a live test before you consider the automation complete. With a live test, you won't use either app's testing functions. Instead, you'll just perform the actions required to trigger the automation and confirm that it runs correctly in real time. Note that in Zapier and in Make, the automation must be on or published. As an example, we'll publish our Zap. Then add a new contact to our directory using this Airtable form. Nothing happens immediately, and this is expected. It's because Zapier only checks for new records in about five minute intervals, depending on what type of plan you're on. A few minutes later, we get our Slack message just as intended. Then we can do the same thing with Make. And once again, the automation ran correctly. Once you have a successful live test, you can let your team or your client know that the automation is ready to use. Testing no-code automations in Zapier and Make is a necessary step to ensure that your automations are functioning properly and delivering the desired results. By taking the time to test your automations, you can identify any potential issues and make any necessary adjustments before they impact your business. Just make sure to use appropriate test data since testing your automations will prompt them to run. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can find all of our content at our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the description down below, and as always, don't forget, keep the flow.